South, I and my constituents had the misfortune, and hundreds of families were ravaged by the crash of Flight 586. Within literally moments of that plane crash, the National Transportation Safety Board was on the ground, sequestering evidence, interviewing witnesses, subpoenaing information if necessary, and since then they have, in they have offered periodic reports. One month and a day earlier, when the World Trade Center collapsed, Nothing could have been further from the truth. According to reports that we've heard since, there has been no comprehensive investigation. One expert in fire engineering concluded that there was virtually a non-existent investigation. We haven't examined any aspects of the collapse that might have impacted rescue worker procedures, even in this last month. Second, reports have emerged that crucial evidence has been mishandled. Over 80% of the steel from the World Trade Center site has already been sold for recycling. Much of it, if not all of it, before investigators and scientists can analyze the information. Third, we've allowed this investigation to become woefully bogged down in infighting and lack of cooperation among agencies. Researchers from FEMA did not get timely access to the designs of the building. News accounts have said there has been friction between engineers and FEMA because of concerns about where the information would wind up. Even the National Science Foundation, which was awarded grants to several scientists to study the collapse, but didn't coordinate these efforts with FEMA or the American Society of Civil Engineers. And finally, we have seen painfully that the financial commitment to this investigation simply is not there. It is not uncommon to spend tens of millions of dollars investigating why a plane crashed. But we've yet to spend even a million dollars on this investigation, and the Bush administration has refused to commit to release the full funding necessary. But what difference does it make, some might ask? Who could have foreseen such a catastrophic event? Well, the same could be said, frankly, any time a plane crashes. Yet every time we learn about why one plane crashed, we save future people from being victims as well. We could learn what firefighters should know before they go into buildings. We should learn what families like Vincent and, uh, and Demencia Ragusa, who are from my district, who lost their son, a firefighter who went into that building, unaware, as I'm sure many of us, as we were, that those buildings were about to go down. We can learn about future design of buildings, and perhaps as importantly, we might be able to revisit buildings that are currently standing and learn ways to make their occupants and firefighters safer. That is why I'm going to be introducing legislation to give the National Institutes of Standards and Technology similar line authorities that the National Transportation Safety Board has. Whether it's a plane crash or a building collapse, we must get to the truth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. But I'm also surprised by the characterization of the chairman, however well-meaning that the city was cooperative. We just heard testimony that the city was the opposite of, of cooperative, that they had refused to provide basic information. And the issue is not when members of the panel signed a document agreeing not to sue, it's where you get off agreeing not to testify. You are public officials gathering information for the public. You don't own it. You don't have the ability to say, I won't use it here, I will use it there. You'll use it wherever we say you'll use it. If you come before us after looking at these blueprints and you decide that the Port Authority was at fault and you raise your right hand because the chairman asked you to, you're going to tell us, I don't care what you sign. The idea that, and this is a government agency, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. It's not a foreign planet. It's not a private company. These are, these are, these are, this is an organization that's funded with our taxpayer dollars, with our fees when we fly in and out of airports. The idea that they should demand that, that whatever information is collected should not be held against them, well, that's not to me being cooperative. And let's not kid ourselves. Whenever you ask for it, Mr. Wingo, you aren't going to get it unless the New York Times ran a story on Christmas Day. All right? Truth be told, that if a warrant for the fact that, that attention was called to this and bright light was, sho was shown on it, they would not have cooperated. To this day, I'd be surprised if you would have the blueprints that you needed. And to, and to give you a sense of the importance of the blueprints so we all understand it, you know, if we're going to do an investigation of the strength or weaknesses of the trusses that firefighters speak so much about, well, you need the blueprints to find out where to even look, where you look in the rubble. And the idea that the city was cooperative, well, I'm not so sure. You know, the two things are not mutually exclusive. Recovering someone and examining the steel that might have been laying on top of them are not mutually exclusive. 
You can do that at great kills. You can do that on the truck before it's loaded onto the barge. You can do it on the barge. The idea that there was some level of cooperation, I have to tell you, the anecdotal record is replete with stories of people having cameras confiscated from them, being stopped at checkpoints. You're officials of the United States government. The idea that this should have to be a subject of a long negotiation over what information would be at your disposal, to me, is, is most troubling. And uh, I just think there's so much that, that has been lost in these last six months. Uh, that we can never go back and retrieve. And that's, it's not only unfortunate, it's borderline criminal. I believe that conspiracy theorists are going to have a field day with this. They're going to make the Warren Commission look like a walk in the park. Can any one of you gentlemen tell me who uh, was in charge of amassing the steel and other debris uh, uh, th as a result from the attack of September 11th on the World Trade Center? I'm not sure I understand fully your in question. In other words, who... Uh, what entity was in charge of collecting, selling, uh, or was disposing of uh, material within two weeks of the actual event, or was it prior to that? Uh, it, it may have been prior to that. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure when the first decision was made on that, but uh, uh, I didn't find out. We didn't. Were you, were you disturbed by that? Then. Uh, By finding that out, were you disturbed to find out that the city was actually disposing of or selling off? Uh, we that had material? previously indicated that we definitely wanted to see the steel and select. Uh, did you or did people. FEMA or any other entity actually ask or tell the city of New York to cease and desist from disposing of that material? Uh, As far as the team is concerned, uh, we made it known that we needed uh, steel, uh, and uh, I, I don't, don't have any knowledge that anyone had the authority even to ask them to cease and desist. So no one even asked them politely to stop selling what in all likelihood could be evidence, Mr. Ling, but in all likelihood could be evidence, Mr. Anastani? Oh, no. I believe I was the first one. To, to find out that the steel is being recycled. New York Times reporter Jim Glantz told me two weeks after earthquake, after a collapse, and, and I tried to uh, contact city and, and also New York Times reporters tried to make sure we, we can have access to steel to do the research. It was not happening, and I went myself. Well, Professor Hassan Astani he brought the building. Falling. Something with a lot of velocity went through there. The C-14 has uh, one of its interesting features is this. The C-14 has uh, one of its interesting features is this. Looks like a bullet went through there. I don't know if that's from being struck while standing or falling. Something with a lot of velocity went through there and flared that open. 9-11 was the greatest loss of life and property damage in U.S. fire history. This should have been the most protected, preserved, over-tested, and thorough investigation of a crime scene in world history. Sadly, it was not. What was it? Well, we know from their own admission, the majority of the evidence was destroyed. I, like Richard said, 22 years of experience, I've seen a lot of crime scenes, I've never seen anything like this in my life. <clears throat> I, was, I was out at the site, I saw trucks leaving faster than you know, anywhere I've ever seen, but I accepted it at the time, and for years I accepted it because it was a recovery and rescue operation, and that's normal to have something like that going. Again, we never see it. As far as connections go, this 56th floor section did exactly what one would hope. Connections were stronger than the material being joined. No evidence of bolts just simply popping. Like it, but that was expected. What I didn't know for years, what was going on behind the scenes, was that evidence was being destroyed when it was shipped off. Um, by their own admission, um, Tower 7 investigation, this investigation at Tower 7 had no physical evidence. How do you investigate a crime when you've destroyed all the evidence? It doesn't make sense. And Bill Rosati, he was here when it all happened. He saw it for himself. Bill, if you can just tell us what uh, you saw, what you heard. 
Well, I was standing like two blocks away, and all of a sudden I just seen a big flash, and then I seen the building coming down, and I just seen people just running everywhere, chaotic like. Um, so I was just standing there, uh, you know. Did the most basic of the guidelines. And I'm going to cover five of them here. One is the NFPA 9.3.6. It covers spoliation of evidence. What Specifically what it reads is once evidence has been removed from the scene, it should be maintained and not destroyed or altered <clears throat> until the investigation is complete. It's horrifying. And then, uh, you know, about a second later, the bottom floor caves out. And uh, the building followed after that. And um, we saw the building crash down all the way to the ground. Um, you know, we were in shock, and then, uh, then the worst part about it, we saw the, the smoke and the plumes of smoke coming after us, and we had to run. Um, they also admit that they refuse to test the explosives, or to test for explosives, or, or residue of thermite. Now, this is what I'm going to go into here just real quickly, is there are national standards for an investigation. That's what all of us are asking for, an investigation that follows national standards and holds people accountable. <clears throat> this, this manual right here, just so you can see it, is what we call the, the kind of the fire investigation 101. This is the most basic fire investigation manual there. This is for the 2001 edition. This is what should have been referred to at least. It doesn't have to be followed exactly, but it should have been used as a guideline for the investigation. I'm just going to cover a few of the things that are in here. <clears throat> so NIST violated and the initial investigators that did not protect the scene violated the most basic of the guidelines. And I'm going to cover five of them here. One is the NFPA 9.3.6. It covers spoliation of evidence. What Specifically what it reads is once evidence has been removed from the scene, it should be maintained and not destroyed or altered <clears throat> until the investigation is complete. The steel was melted down prior to the investigation. We know that from their own admission. This is no conspiracy theory stuff. 19.2.4, exotic accelerants. If, if on the scene you find melted steel or concrete, you should consider the use of exotic accelerants. And they specifically say in the manual, thermite the mixtures produce exceedingly hot fires that can account for melted steel and concrete. That also says they leave residues that will, can be tested for visually and chemically identifiable. <clears throat> Again, they did not test for it. And just put it in perspective, on a routine house fire, if we suspect even the slightest use of an accelerant, we're going to test for it when there's no fatalities, when there's very little property damage. So to not do it on this, there is absolutely no excuse. I can't drive that point home enough. 18.15 is analyzed fuel source. All available fuel sources should be considered and eliminated until one fuel can be identified as meeting all the physical damage criteria. For example, if you, find, if you find pulverized concrete, which we all know there was in all three buildings, there was pulverized concrete, <clears throat> the only fuels that can create seeded explosions should be considered. So they shouldn't be considering fires. They shouldn't be doing that. It doesn't account for pulverized concrete. They should only be considering exotic ex accelerants and explosives. 19.4.8.2.6, extremism. The terrorist may include fire as but one of a variety of weapons along with explosives used in furthering his or her goal. We know they used them in 93. Why would we not? We know they used them in 93. Why would we not test for them now? There was reports that day, multiple reports, which I'll get into in a second. So they could have put them in the basement. How do we know that unless we test for it? I mean, even if it is the terrorists that they claim they are, we need to test this. 14.3, preservation of the fire scene and physical evidence. We find the following. The cause of the fire explosion is not known until the n near the end of the investigation. The entire fire scene should be considered physical evidence and should be protected and preserved. It's just over and over. There's so many. You can go to our website, the Firefighters from Island of Truth. We have many more of these actual um, chapters that cover what they should have done that they did not do. So now by their own admission, in all three building collapses, NIST refused to test for, to physically test, like Dr. Stephen Jones did, for explosives. Um, this, this is just unbelievable. And here are their excuses, and I quote, it is unlikely that 100 pounds of thermite or more could have been carried into World Trade Center 7 and placed around columns without being detected, either prior to September 11th or during that day. So again, I've been on a lot of fire scenes, and I've seen a lot of investigations, and why would we not test because something's hard to do? That's the exact reason you need to investigate it. If that was hard to do, we need to find out how they did it. <laughs>